Teddy told me that in Greek, nostalgia literally means the pain from an old wound. It's a twinge in your heart, far more powerful than memory alone. This device isn't a spaceship. It's a time machine. Backwards, and forwards. Final Fantasy VII is probably one of the most beloved games in history. For many, myself included, it was the introduction to JRPGs, and it forever changed my idea of how a story could be told in a video game. I'm sure there are many people, like myself, who spent countless hours playing this game in the 90s. With just a few seconds from a song, I'm sure you can picture in detail the setting and the scenario it's used in the game when it's played. It's obvious when you play the Final Fantasy VII Remake that Square was aware of this nostalgia. It oozes out of every frame on the screen. The remade soundtrack along with these fully fleshed out environments that are perfect recreations of the pre-rendered backgrounds from the original. They knew what they were doing and they knew how to hit longtime fans in all the right spots. Like a trained masseuse knowing the exact place to pinch, Square knew which music cues would strike which emotions from players. It's why changes like Eris theme are now played when you meet her for the first time and again in the church instead of the original score. Most people playing the remake know what happens, so it's bittersweet looking at this sweet, lovable person in high definition, knowing what her fate is later on in the story. The game is a great walk down memory lane. You get to explore all the iconic locations from Midgar in full HD, with beautifully rendered character models and great voice acting to recreate all your favorite scenes from your childhood. You can also explore more of the world to get a better idea of how people live in the slums versus how people live on the top plate, which was pretty underutilized in the original, for good reason. The original game, as a whole, had a much greater story to tell. I've noticed a lot of people labeling this game as padded, and I have to agree. The Midgar section of the original was pretty much a 5 hour introduction before the real game started. When I first played all those years ago, I thought that President Shinra was the main villain, but he was just a stepping stone to introduce Sephiroth in the greater crisis of the planet. I bought this game knowing it was only the Midgar section, but by the time I was about three quarters of the way through, I started to ask myself, what's the point? Sure, the game looks great, sure the character models and voice acting breathe new life into the silent, low polygon characters of the original, the combat is fun and exciting and... Everything, everything is great about the game. Nailed it, I know, thank you, moving on. But is it what I really wanted? I think knowing what was going to happen next really magnified the feeling that the game is padded. If I had started blind with no knowledge of the original, the quests and dungeons would feel on par with the filler quests in The Witcher 3. Here, your frying pan. But because I just wanted to hit all those major plot points as fast as I could, Something like extending the sewer feels really annoying, because I know that the fight on top of the support pillar is just around the corner, but the game has me flipping switches and solving water puzzles. Knowing every plot point before it happens is a pretty boring way to tell a story. Once the nostalgia wears off, a story of this length can't carry itself on I, I understood that reference. alone. But like Star Wars, it seems like fans only want the story they already know, told in the way they've already experienced it, with no room for creative growth. Show us the characters we've seen before doing the things we've seen before, and no one gets hurt. That's why Square took a very bold and meta move by adding the Arbiters of Fate into the remake. These are literal plot devices that push the character into the exact spot they're supposed to be in so that the story can play out exactly like it did before. You'd have to be pretty dense not to get that they were written in as surrogates for the fans and their expectations that the story be exactly the way they remember it. So I have to applaud Square Enix for doing this. 
it's a cool idea using fate as a metaphor for a story that's ending has already been written. If you step outside what you're supposed to be doing, some external force will push you back in line and make sure you don't deviate from the path at all. They took, which was probably the biggest problem they faced from fans, and wrote them into the story so the characters could take it head on. I've already seen outrage from fans, and yeah, that's pretty much expected at this point. When creators change something in a pre-existing IP, it's almost always meant with contemptuousness. But I hope I can share a few of my ideas and maybe, just maybe, change a few people's minds to at least be optimistic for the future of this franchise. At the end of the game, and the player defeats the Arbiter of Fate, and the characters have literally and figuratively freed themselves from the pre-written story Fate has for them, the game ends with, the unknown journey will continue, just to hammer in the fact that the story from here on is going to be different. At this point, we can only speculate about what will happen next, but given how terrible the stories in Final Fantasy XV and Kingdom Hearts are, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't at least a little worried about what was going to happen next. A lot of people say that any change to the story ruins Final Fantasy VII, but I have to disagree. I'd say leaving something old behind and starting something new is in line with most of the major themes of the game. A running theme throughout Final Fantasy VII is identity, and allowing an older past self to die so that you can be reborn anew. Most of the main characters, even Sephiroth, deal with the loss of something that once defined them, and they have to choose who they want to become. We watch as these characters struggle to find their place in a changing world. The first half of the game, Cloud is living someone else's life. He's so wrapped up in the past and not being able to get into Soldier, he let it define him and he ran from it until ultimately his mind blocked it out completely. It's not until he strips away his false identity and he realizes that his past failures can't change what he does in the present. Cloud's big revelation comes when he understands he's able to make the choices now about who he wants to become. What makes Cloud and Sephiroth such good protagonist and antagonist is how each character deals with redefining themselves. Once Sephiroth learns of his past and discovers his true identity, he goes insane and spirals into destructive madness. Sephiroth takes his new identity and aims to recreate a devastating event that happened 2000 years ago. Genova tried to take over the world and failed. Sephiroth is just repeating the same mistakes from the past and he wants to relive those events because he feels that's what he's owed. He feels the planet and the promised land belong to his mother and thus they belong to him. The whole idea of the promised land is that it's not a physical place, but it's the happiness that comes by doing good and making the future brighter for others. The ancients describe their promised land as a place they go once their journey of life is complete and they can return to the planet. We're shown in the game that returning to the planet is the first step needed so that something new can grow. Sephiroth and Shinra's blunder is that they think the Promised Land is an actual place they can exploit for its Mako. But the reality is, the Promised Land is just a metaphor for letting go of something once its cycle is completed, and allowing something new to grow. Cycles completing and letting go of the past are prevalent throughout the story, and it comes to the forefront of the game when Aerith dies. Take this quote from one of the original creators of Final Fantasy VII, Yoshinori Kitase, when asked about Aerith's death, and he said, Death comes suddenly, and there's no notion of good or bad. It leaves not a dramatic feeling, but great emptiness. When you lose someone you loved very much, you feel this big empty space and think, if I'd have known this was coming, I would have done things differently. If these are the emotions the original creators intended you to feel, how could you feel this sudden emptiness if you knew exactly where, when, and how every event in the story was going to play out? Aerith's death in the original was so memorable because it came as such a shock to players. If the remake repeated all the familiar plot points, would it still stir up the same emotions you had the first time you experienced them? Probably not. I can't help but feel moved by what these creators are trying to do. I can never be 16 years old again playing Final Fantasy VII on my PlayStation 1 in the house I no longer live in. Those moments when I first experienced the game were great, but now they're gone. The fact that I can't relive those moments today doesn't take anything away from them. They're still there. 
It's fine to feel nostalgia and miss something from your past, but we live in the present. There will always be moments, people, and places we miss, but their cycle is complete and their time is done. They're gone. Time will only ever move forward. There ain't no getting off this train we're on. And with that, I want to end this video. I understand how people can feel upset not getting what they want, but remember, Square could have made this game at any time and it would have been a top seller no matter what. I feel that they made it now because there's a specific story they want to tell. These days, we're saturated with all the remakes, reboots, and retellings, so I'm sure there's something special planned for us. Let's keep the conversation going in the comments and remember to like the video, share it with someone if you think they'd like it, and remember to subscribe for more. Stay safe out there everyone, good night, good luck, and good god Square Enix don't fuck this up.